Welcome back to the Learner Radiology YouTube channel and the Brain Tumor Board Review. Here we have case 14 in the Brain Tumor series. This is a 65 year old woman with confusion and visual changes. Here we have some images from an MRI uh, through the coronal radiata and the lateral ventricles. On the left, you have a diffusion. This middle one is flare. Right is T2. Pretty easy to see the abnormality there. There's an old trick when you're taking cases or someone's asking you questions and you don't see the abnormality, you just draw a big circle. But you don't need to do that in this case. Here we see some more images. We have a pre-contrast axial, post-contrast axial, and a post-contrast sagittal. You see this has pretty avid enhancement, but there's some other features there you might think about. So your question is, what's your top three differential considerations? So I've been kind of nice. Not making you come up with an exact diagnosis here, but you should be able to come up with at least three kind of things that you might be thinking about. Your second question is, what is the current preferred name for hemangiopericytoma? So the name of hemangiopericytoma has changed in recent nomenclature. This is a gliosarcoma, meningoepithelioma, dysplastic gangliocytoma, or solitary fibrous tumor. So this is a case of solitary fibrous tumor, and this kind of answers your second question there. This is the lesion formerly known as hemangiopericytomas. These are dural masses that tend to be aggressive. They look a lot like meningiomas, and the classic teaching was that they're kind of in the same family as meningiomas, but if you look at the genetics of these, they're not, uh, they're not related to meningiomas, but they're instead related to fibrous tumors in other locations, such as pleural tumors. Now, if you see one of these, like if you see a lesion that looks extra axial, but looks aggressive, and you're thinking about a high-grade meningioma, probably solitary fibrous tumor is on your differential. These tend to be well circumscribed, extra axial. They can have flow voids, and you do see flow voids in this case, which is a nice clue. There tends to be avid and uh, somewhat heterogeneous enhancement. Now, if you're thinking about the differential for these, you probably are going to think about meningioma. Now, these are much more common. So if meningioma is a choice, you probably want to go with it, uh, and you won't know until you uh, do a biopsy. Maybe you think about metastatic disease. Maybe lymphoma or myeloma could be some other considerations, but um, meningioma is really your primary differential consideration. So here we see the MR that we saw on diffusion. It's not that bright, uh, so we're, it's not really that helpful. Uh, but here you have a superficial mass in the left parietal region, it's hard to tell like really whether it's extraaxial or intraaxial. Maybe you see a little CSF cleft here, uh, but the mass is here. You have edema around it in the parietal lobe, some mass effect on the lateral ventricle there. But if you look, you see these dark little spots. Those are flow voids. And so those are areas where you have prominent vessels going through the region. So that can be a nice clue. You're looking at a highly vascular mass. Here's your post-contrast and again, or pre and post-contrast. On your pre-contrast, again, you see those flow voids and those vessels that are even more sharply demarcated when you give contrast. Here you see the avid enhancement, very bright, both on axial and uh, our sagittal images. There is this broad dural attachment. Here it looks like the cortex is kind of squeezed away and uh, causing a little bit of mass effect there. That might make you think that you're looking at an extra axial lesion. So here I have a movie of this from an angiogram. So here you're going to see the angiogram images. This is an external carotid injection. I'm going to let this, uh, I'm going to run through this one more time so you can see that again. I'll stop. All right, so you have an external carotid injection. So these are the branches of the external carotid, a lot of dural branches here. And you start to see filling of this mass. I'm going to go forward a little bit more. And here you see an, a very avid mass uh, in that left parietal region being supplied by these external carotid branches. So it's extremely vascular. And so that's uh, a very common appearance uh, for these lesions. A lot of times they'll go on to embolize these before they move forward with, with surgical resection. Uh, as I said, the question uh, about what's the preferred name for hemangiopericytoma is solitary fibrous tumor. So just be aware that that nomenclature has changed. So you might see a little bit different uh, nomenclature. So thanks for tuning into this case. Hopefully you learned a little bit about extraaxial lesions and what to include in your differential if you see an, a pretty aggressive looking extraaxial lesion. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the rest of the videos. 
We're going to have more cases coming up this month as you guys get ready for the AVR core exam. Thanks, everyone.